Please welcome Managing Director for Google Travel, Richard Holden, in discussion with SCIF Director of Research, Seth Borka. Hello, everybody. Good to see you all again. Uh, Amazing in person. It's great. Thanks for joining us, Rich. I told you we'd be back with, with Google. And I know we have a, a session before lunch, but we have actually some really cool pieces of news to break. So please stick with us. Uh, oh, we're spoiler alert here, but hang with us, guys. <laughs> Anyways, Richard, thanks so much for, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Glad to be in person. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into it. We've got the slides up. You have a, a pretty big announcement to make today about how Google is going to change how it interacts with, with um, activities and um, attractions. Can you just tell us a little about that? Yeah, we um, launched a new set of experiences on search related to um, attractions, tours, and activities. Uh, if you do a search on Google this week related to a point, a point of interest like the Statue of Liberty or other destinations, you'll see now a new a module on the page which gives you information about admission tickets, also other additional information if it may be available as well. And in the near future, we're also going to make it possible for providers to surface experiences or unique experiences on the page as well. Think about sort of you know wine tasting in Paris or those types of experiences as well. Um, and in addition to that, we've also launched a new uh, things to do ad format on the page um, this week as well. So two ways of entering. One is through a free listings product that uh, offers admission information and tickets. And then the second is an ad module. So just to be clear, we're starting with kind of what you call attractions, right? Like points of interest. Yeah. Uh, tours are not part of that yet, but that's coming soon? Yeah, uh, we, we're gathering that information from partners. We'll, have, we'll modify the experience in the coming months to uh, add experiences in there as well and differentiate between the two pretty clearly. Yeah. Um, and I also want to talk about this, this um, advertising module that we have here. Uh, so paid ads for tickets and tours, is, that's a, a new product that you're offering. Yeah, we've been testing it for a while, but it's launching fully at this point. We've also been testing the organic or the free offering I was talking about before for the summer and earlier than that. Uh, and the ad format is on the top of the search results page. But the ad format's just for mobile, if I understand that correctly. So. Uh, it may be launching on mobile today. I, yes, that's correct. I think it's coming on desktop as well. Okay, but just that was going to be my question. Yeah. It's coming to desktop as well, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess one of my questions on this topic um, is right now it's kind of very uh, ad link based. Is there any chance that there'll be more direct and integrations come in, kind of like what we have. Well, you had this Reserve with Google product. Maybe talk a little about that. Yeah, Reserve with Google was a broad-based offering out of primarily our Geo team that was meant to address multiple verticals. Um, we've pivoted in travel in particular, and uh, Reserve with Google is no longer focused on this segment. And so what we're launching now is something that isn't uh, enabled booking. It is direct linking to the partner, which actually most of the partners that we've been working with or many of the direct suppliers have been asking for the ability to have consumers come to them direct. Mm -hmm. So that's the change that's existing here that didn't exist with Reserve with Google before. Got it. Um, and so is there, would there any plans to bring back any sort of, like you have on flights, you have that, that book with Google option. Would that ever be on the roadmap for this kind of product? Something that we could look at here as well too, but in flights and hotels, you're right, we have a book on Google capability. It's not something that we're offering it in this, okay. uh, in this segment at the moment. Uh, and is this mostly working with, it's working most with the directly with suppliers or with integration partners? Really, you know, it's similar to what we've been doing in hotels for a while mm -hmm. now too that I'm happy to chat about as well. But it's really trying to work across the whole segment, the whole ecosystem. So we're working, um, you know, with suppliers. In this case, in, for things to do in particular, we're focused on res techs, OTAs, et cetera. Um, and not so much the direct supplier in this context. In the hotel case, we're working with the suppliers as well as the whole intermediary space. Yeah. One of the things, speaking of, I guess, going a little bit broader, right, with what you're doing in hotel, you're, you have this free, the new free links, and that's, you've done the same thing with hotels, and you've done the same thing with flights. I guess, I guess it sort of makes sense to me. I mean, you guys make money off of advertising. Doesn't it make sense for you to have more ads? So why the shift towards more free links? 
you know, the truth is, you know, for a long time, Google's generated a tremendous amount of free traffic for partners, whether it be through traditional you know, search links or whether it be for a particular property through a website button and the like. So I wouldn't really call it a big shift. What I would say is that when we looked out there in the landscape, so we said, well, we really want to make sure that we have comprehensive information mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for users, and that includes suppliers, intermediaries, et cetera. We want all offers to be available to the consumer. And uh, we were worried that we weren't providing all of those offers and full comprehensiveness of information. And Google you know, traditionally has stood for objectivity and comprehensiveness. It's something that we think we need to do deeply in travel as well. If we do that well by offering free booking links, we get more engagement by the whole industry. We offer a better product to consumers, they engage with it more. Uh, and we think also that's good for all the partners involved because it'll drive more traffic to them over time. You could see this happening over a period of time with us, frankly. You know, in Flight Search, early last year, we essentially made leads free. Uh, we opened up the platform. We've integrated many more online travel agents than we've ever had before in the product. And we think we have a more comprehensive offering. In shopping, early last year, we also came out with free listings. A broad base of merchants have joined us now on the platform as a result. We did a similar thing with hotels earlier this year, and now trying to do something similar with things to do space. Uh, and you're not, I guess, yeah, that's, I, it's, I think, a really interesting trend, and, and I think a lot of people are, are happy to see it, I guess, right? Um, I want to talk a bit about kind of the travel business on, on Google and how, sure. how Google's doing. On the Q2 earnings call, uh, you called out the strength of the travel industry from an advertiser perspective. So I guess safe to say that these shifts to free links haven't really hurt your, your advertising revenue? No, I mean, well, these are, these are, that was a one-time moment, and these are changes okay. that have only been made a short while ago. But I would say overall, our belief is that it will strengthen the model over time because it will create a better product. That's always really how Google's operated. Focus on the user experience first, build a great experience, get great engagement with users, and then there's something of value to provide to partners at the end of the day, which drives the ads business as well, too. Yeah. But yes, you know, we did say in the earnings call that travel was a contributor to year-over-year -year growth in the advertising business, um, just like you know, a lot of segments have been coming back since uh, vaccination rates have gone up and the like and people start to travel again. Is it kind of back to where it was pre-COVID or is it just up compared to other segments? Uh, just generally stating that we're seeing growth contribution from travel as well. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear that and that's all the audience here. Is that, um, are you seeing different shifts in how travel companies advertise on Google? I'm thinking specifically of this big conversation about performance versus brand marketing, I guess YouTube versus blue links. Are you seeing a shift in how, how, how companies, travel companies engage with Google? Well, I mean, we're kind of in the midst of a strange time still, but I would say obviously people were trenched greatly uh, you know, a year and a half ago. I think we pr probably could say we probably saw more focus on upper funnel identification with users, more brand identification mm -hmm. for a period of time there where people weren't traveling much, so you weren't really looking for direct response. Uh, and, and rightly, as you're seeing vaccination rates increase, people with interest coming back to travel, you know, the travel companies are coming back and spending more on thinking about direct response advertising. Yeah. So I think obviously that's the bread and butter of what we do, but it's also what companies are trying to do to drive leads in particular. Um, but yeah, I think that's the shift we've probably seen over the course of the year, a little bit more focus on brand, more back toward direct response yeah. as things recover. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know if you saw the session. Last night, Brian Chesky was here. He said he cut, he had hundreds of millions of dollars in Google AdWords, so that he mostly cut, and he, he said it didn't really impact his business that much. Do you think that's gonna, he's gonna regret that decision to cut? I don't know. I guess time will tell. Anyway, Airbnb is still a good customer of Google's as well as a good advertising partner. Um, so we work closely with them with many others. So we hope they continue to buy ads. Yeah. I, I think they might need to. I think they to, may continue to do so. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Uh, and I guess that brings us to vacation rentals, though, because you have, I mean, Google has so many cool things to do. You have hotels, flights, and you're also trying to be more comprehensive in vacation rentals. Um, but I do think that I don't see a lot of OTAs when I look at the, um, the vacation rentals segments. Is that something that concerns you, or are you very, are you, do you like the suppliers you have, and, and 
talk a little about that business. Yeah, I mean, this space is obviously booming. We all know that. It's been doing quite well. The pandemic has been a boost to it in many ways. And the growth that we were seeing there is certainly continuing uh, as the pandemic. I, I hate saying post-pandemic. Well, we're yeah, not really, we should, we're kind of getting there. Well, I'll forgive um, you. I feel like we're getting yeah, there. Variants are popping up here and there. Uh, but clearly, it's an area that we want to continue to invest in. We're focused more on accommodation or uh, lodging uh, search as a whole now. So we're trying to bring together hotels and vacation rental content. And you know, our feeling is we'd like to work with all partners in the industry, again, from a comprehensive standpoint. Um, we do have many OTAs that participate. Some don't participate in the meta search offering. They as well do participate on the ad side. We'd like to have them participate on the meta search side too. Um, but we do think that there's a tremendous amount of non-unique content that exists out there in the space that we can get through multiple different providers. So, you know, our goal, just like we've been doing across hotels with free booking links, things to do, is attract all partners into the into the platform. And I think, you know, we've got we've got great growth in the product. I think as we get more engagement with users over time, we deepen the integration into hotels over time, that we envision most of the partners will want to work with us over time. When you talk about the great growth, that's people booking, like click-throughs and bookings, or is it? People searching for, searching. looking for the content, also being able to generate leads to our partners yeah. as well. And yeah, it's potentially generating an advantage for some of those suppliers who are going direct through Google. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, well, interesting. Are, is, are you seeing more direct suppliers participate in the Google auctions? Like, is it used to be like Expedia Group and, and Book and Holdings were, they were really huge players in Google and they crowd everyone else out. Are you seeing that, that shift a little bit with the pandemic? You know, I, I would say that free booking links is one way for a number of partners to engage with us that may not have been giving us data in the past. You know, many of them are choosing to be a free listing provider and not become an advertiser. Yeah. Some of them are choosing to become advertisers. Most look at it as a nice complement to doing both. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily seeing a change in our engagement on advertising as a whole, but I think, again, getting more comprehensive information, showing the benefits to many of the suppliers in the hotel space that may not have been giving us data before, and opening up the opportunity for advertising may grow that over time as well. Yeah, it sounds like an interesting strategy. Um, let's transition topics sure. a little bit. Let's, I promised the audience we would talk about sustainability. Okay, so I knew you were going to hear it. Happy to talk. Let's, let's talk about that, because you have a pretty exciting sustainability announcement. So tell us, I mean, yeah, just tell us how Google is going to change sustainability and travel right now. Uh, I mean, frankly, we take it on as a pretty big responsibility. Uh, and really, there is a travel-specific initiative. We've set up a team of engineers, product managers, designers, and others to work on this exclusively starting early this year. Um, but this is also a broader Google effort. We fit into an overall set of teams that have been formed across Google to look at sustainability. Travel, obviously, has an outsized impact uh, in the world in terms of carbon. Uh, and so we think we have a responsibility to act in this yeah. area. So you know, one thing that we're announcing today is a set of changes we're making in the hotels product yeah. to allow, uh, to feature hotels uh, with an eco badge, essentially, that are meeting certifications of third parties out there. You can think of LEED certified uh, and the like. Um, and we're also allowing those partners to connect with us through Google My Business and manage their attributes up to 29, 30 different attributes, their eco-oriented attributes that they can uh, show that they live up to certain standards on the product. And I think you're showing on the screen. Yeah, I'm just skipping. Here we go. There's yeah. the standards. Exactly. You can go into the About tab with them looking at a particular property, scroll down to the sustainability section, you'll see all the uh, efforts that a hotel is taking. And I would also say that you know we're working on this in hotels. We're also announcing today that we joined the Travelist Coalition. Yeah. Uh, started by the Duke of Sussex and participants such as Booking and TripAdvisor and Trip.com and Skyscanner. We're joining forces with all of them to try to make a real impact on the industry. We're going to be working on an open, sustainable model or impact model for flights first in cooperation with those partners. Uh, I say open in the sense that it's going to be available to all partners out there. And our goal in this is more than anything just to create standardization around this or you know, um, understandable metrics around this. Most people look at sustainable travel. They look at information on carbon impact. They don't really know what it means, frankly. Uh, and there's a ver variety of reporting out there that's not held to any particular standards. So if we're really going to get consumers to take action on this, we've got to join forces across the industry and do this. And that's what the Travelist Coalition is trying to do, and we're excited to work with them on that. Yeah. And do the same thing in hotels. We'll be working on open models there with booking and others to try to 
you know, level set this information out there. So this uh, travels, most important question, did you get to meet the Duke? I have not met the Duke, no. Oh, all right, we'll work on that. We're working on it, yeah. All right. All right, second most important question. So let's talk a little more about this. So um, I guess that kind of goes back to what you're saying that you want to give people choice and, and transparency, right? Yeah. How do you, I guess, verify these, these sort of um, listings? Where is this sustainability features coming from? That's a great question. I mean, from a standpoint of eco-badging and the third-party organizations we work with, a, a, a hotel comes in and self-reports this. They come into the Google My Business Center. They select from... Uh, standard organizations that we recognize for this, and then they self-report on the attributes underneath that that fall into four different categories. Um, we are you know, relying on the data that they're providing us. Mm -hmm. We do have some checks in place that we're looking at manually and automated, uh, and we will take action on reporting back from individuals telling us uh, that that information looks inaccurate. Um, these eco-certification -certif organizations also work with the hotels to make sure there's on-site checks that are being done to verify that there's follow-through on these things. And we also are probably work well, we are working on some other more automated ways to check on this in the future, but nothing to announce today yeah, on that. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Um, will this sustainability data go into the Google search rankings at all? You know, ranking is not something that we talk about in, in general, right, I would right. say. I should have known better than that, but I had, I had to pry. I, mean, I will say that there are a lot of aspects that go into ranking, both from a quality perspective to make sure we're delivering the right results, and then also just from a user engagement standpoint. Is this data proving useful to users? Are they engaging with it? Um, or are they, are they getting value from it at the end of the day? Uh, but nothing to say about sustainability being incorporated into ranking. I mean, if, if you had two hotels, entirely equal in every respect. Why not show the sustainable one first? Yeah, part of it is this is early stages. We're still yeah. trying to understand how users engage with it. Is the content accurate over time as well? As you're rightly yeah. pointing out, we want to make sure that we're providing value. Yeah. Um, and you have, I, I, I neglected to, to mention, you have a, a whole team behind this, right? Yeah. We have a dedicated team focused on sustainability. And I, can you give me a sense of just how the size or scale of this team? You have like full, you have engineering resources, you have user experience, like what, what's involved? We have across the functions, we have designers, we have researchers, we have product managers, uh, we have engineers working on it. Um, it's a meaningfully sized team, but I'm yeah. not going to say. Personal. Yeah, you know, it ch changes. It's, it's it changes, exactly. Some time. people join the team, some people leave the team. Yeah, but it's growing at the moment. Uh, I want to talk about some CO2 emission stuff because sure. that was also in my presentation. You currently have, you currently show carbon emissions from flights on Google Flights. Is that... Yeah, that is true. It's something we haven't really talked about, well, but we do in the product. If you go into Flight Search today and you look at results, you will see carbon uh, impact of a particular flight you choose. You can also sort the results based on carbon impact. And you know, to be honest, I've been playing with this product for quite some time, and I didn't, you know, first I was like, yeah, it'll be pretty similar, no big deal. But I've been looking at a bunch of flights recently and trips that I'm making, the one I just made here in the last yeah. day, uh, and I'm amazed at the difference that exists there between impact of different aircraft type, yeah. you know, change stopovers, et cetera. I do think it's gonna start to change how people think about this. It's, you know, early stage of what we're doing, but it just gives you a taste of what we're gonna start to do, just to raise awareness more than anything among yeah. consumers and let them be able to look at results if they wanna make a decision based on that as well. It's kind of hidden right now. It is hidden, yeah. yeah but it's gonna become more visible, you think? It'll get more visible. Probably good, bad. Okay, uh, I want to touch on a couple of other things. Sure. I think Google has actually done an excellent job of showing mobility data and travel data. When I do searches for an area, it'll tell me, oh, 60% of the hotels are booked, or it'll show me COVID case counts. Can you talk a little about your initiatives to launch that, that new feature and, and how that's played out? Well, a lot of the stuff you're talking about came out of the pandemic in particular. Yes. When everything all hell you know, broke loose last March, we sat down and we started to have a discussion like, well, I guess we're going to scrap our plans. A lot of things we're building aren't going to be relevant for a while. <laughs> uh, and, but, you know, a lot of it turned around, how can we help people from a safety perspective um, uh, and health perspective travel if they need to travel? And so what you're referring to is we started to come out with attributes or reporting in the interface around, uh, you know, what are the standards for various markets? What's the infection rate in various markets? And then as things started to open up again, people were wondering, is, are the hotels open? If I go to this place, are restaurants open? And so we started to roll out features along those lines. And, you know, unfortunately, I, I, we had a big debate about whether it was worth doing some of this work, would it not last long? And unfortunately, it seems to have lasted longer in terms of value than oh, we yeah. thought. And, you know, I also think people's desire for information around this sort of stuff is just not going away anytime soon. So we are investing more to make sure we're 
telling people about occupancy yeah. rates, et cetera, or just what the standards are changing in terms of COVID. One of the few times you're disappointed to see an ROI above what you're expecting. Exactly. That is not an area we were seeking. Well, on the research side, when we do our research, we have a, a, a travel tracker index, and we found your mobility data is one of the best indicators of that. And so there's a huge ability to, to, for Google to drive data and insights for the industry. You've, you've launched some dashboards around that, right? We have, yeah. I mean, there's... I mean, there's a couple of things. There's mobility data that's been launched through the MAPS team, our GEO team, I mean, but, but this, yeah. making like, like local um, places understand or uh, commerce uh, boards, et cetera, understand what's actually happening in the market. We've also, within the travel team, launched a set of tools around uh, destination insights, for example, yeah. Yeah. that are helping hotels and um, chambers of commerce and others understand, is, are people traveling again? What are they looking for? What, uh, what's the demand out there? Particularly as you know, people turn down their businesses in many cases and markets. Is it time to turn your business back on again? Yeah. Are you seeing that demand? And then from a carrier perspective, a lot of the airlines found this particularly useful of understanding, are we going to roll back capacity in this market or not? Like, you, you've even worked with some like route planning uh, with some of your data, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we worked with a number of carriers, you know, Lufthansa, a few other carriers have found great value in trying to understand when are they bringing back on traffic in various markets. Is there a new B2B business line for Google selling data insights? No, I mean, for our perspective, this is just, you know, good partnership again. You know, we're working with these partners on a lot of levels. If we can give them greater insights, they'll work with us in many other ways, hopefully in the future. All right. Well, thank you, Richard. We're, we're at time. Uh, we'll wrap up. But thank you so much for, for talking with Thanks, me, for sharing it. I'm real, the sustainability and things to do, very excited about Yeah, very excited about that as well. Thank Thanks you so much, time. Richard. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.